Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Car Question. Uh, we're still in the review of the Lincoln MKZ. By the way, there's a playlist with the other video that we did, the interior, the exterior, the good and the bad, uh, compare cars. So right there in the description, check on the playlist and you can press and you will see all the video. But right now, we're going to do the specification and the road handling of that new Lincoln MKZ. There is three engine choice with the Lincoln MKZ. The first one is a 2.0 liter GTDI, as they call it. You've got also the possibility to have it with all wheel drive. It's got direct injection. It's going to be good for 245 horsepower at 5,500 RPM. The torque, 275 pound feet of torque at 3,000 RPM. But there's a but. Make a star on the number because this number will only be achieved if you got 93 octane fuel. So that's kind of sad because right here in Quebec, we don't have a lot of 93 station. We've got 91, but you're going to have less performance with your car if you put 91 in it. Also, the conception is cast aluminum. Let's say that you want to drive in a more eco-friendly manner. You don't want to spend a lot of fuel. You've got the possibility to choose a hybrid version. It's only available with front wheel drive. You've got a hybrid Atkinson cycle inline four 2.0 liter engine. It got permanent magnet AC synchronous motor coming with it. You've got also a sequential multi-port electronic fuel injection and the system will be able to give you 188 horsepower combined. So this is not that high. Uh, I, usually with hybrid version, they are more powerful because with those, uh, with those electrical motors, you've got boom, snap response. But right now it's not the case. So it will change drastically the driving experience in that MKC. Yes, you will save some fuel, but you don't get the power that we got right now in this one. So it got a lithium ion battery, 35 uh, kilowatt per hour. It's also made of cast aluminum. But when you want to get to the real thing, you've got the V6 GTDI 3 liter with all wheel drive power. You've got a DOHE four valve per cylinder engine, twin independent variable camshaft timing. But the good news is that it's twin turbocharged. So there you go, major power. You've got also direct multi-shot injection in it. Front wheel drive, be careful, the number will change depending on what version you choose. 350 horsepower at 5,500 RPM with 93 octane. All wheel drive, 400 horsepower at 5,500 RPM. And you will have also 400 pound feet of torque at 2,750 RPM. 93 octane fuel required once again. In the engine, it's made of compacted graphite iron and will be able to go up to 7,000 RPM in revolution. That's what I like. So this is probably the choice if you like more performance car out of it. These cars come equipped with six-speed automatic transmission with paddle shift, but it's not a real manual when you choose a paddle shift. As soon as you see a hill or you want to make a passing maneuver, just push on the minus paddle, it will go down with the gears, but as soon as you're gonna hit some high revolution, it will change for you, so it won't hold it there. But the thing that's gonna change more your driving style is probably the Lincoln drive control that allow the driver to choose between three different setting modes. So you've got comfortable, normal, and sport. If you go into comfortable mode, you will feel a change in the steering, but much more in the suspension and acceleration are gonna be more comfortable. Move into sports mode and you will feel those bumps differently. So the magnetic suspension will react. The steering a little bit, but acceleration are going to be more reactive. So there's a big difference between those two modes. But when you go into normal mode, you don't feel a lot of change coming out from this system. Acceleration with the 3.0 liter twin turbo are violent. Uh, even if you're on dry tarmac, you will see sometimes that traction control light up and you can feel that rush of torque as soon as you're gonna accelerate. Be careful with a car of 400 horsepower because you need to get some practice behind the wheels before you use that full power. Also, right now, what's the purpose of having front wheel drive with 350 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque. Go for the hull wheel drive. Don't keep it front wheel drive. The, the transmission is not that bad, but sometimes you can 
feel when you're in term normal and cover mode that it's searching for its gear. It needs some time to react and sometimes it will go for a change and went back. But when you're in sports mode, it's more sharp. The programmation is a little bit better. Also, if you want to go into manual, be ready. Sometimes it won't give you an advice and you will press and nothing will happen. That's because you're too high. It doesn't give you a warning to, telling you that, hey, you need to slow down before you shift. You've got so much power in this car. You've got a great engine, but it doesn't have the sound of a 400 horsepower engine. So the, the, they should have given us a better experience with that engine sound. When you're gonna be uh, into cornering, another thing that greatly improved the driving of this car is the dynamic torque vectoring. It's part of the driver's package with the MKZ with a 3.2 liter engine. It will enhance cornering agility without compromising the ride comfort. So when you're gonna be in a curve, you're gonna accelerate and give it full gas in that display of that intelligent all-wheel drive system, you will see that it will give more power to the exterior wheels and give you a strong push in that turn. And it really showed the influence that it have even more on humid condition, on humid time rack, and on icy situation like snow that we have right now. Powerful car need to stop sometimes, so when it get to brake feeling, it's communicative. It's not one of the best out there, but you will be able to feel when you're gonna need to, to push it a little bit more or simply reduce your braking effort depending on your condition. So 12.4 inches, of disc in front, same thing in the rear, but not at the same contact surface. They could have gone for a little bit bigger brakes with that driver package. Direction is precise, even with a big car like that. Once again, it's not one of the most communicative out there. When you're gonna put it into sports mode, you're gonna feel it a little bit more, but when you're gonna be in comfort mode or normal mode, it's normal, okay? The, the word describes it better, but feel, feel free to use your configuration to make it more sharp in those dynamic modes. Comfort inside the car, well, uh, it's not that bad, but the seats are a little bit tight, you know, right there on my side. Uh, so if you're even larger than me, you're, you might feel that you're in a place where you won't be able to get comfortable even with all those settings. Also the climatization, it's perfect for the three automatic mode. I don't need to fight with the climate control as I do with some other cars out there. In the rear, passenger will not be that comfortable if they're tall. Leg room and headroom is not the best right now in the segment. Other than that, visibility up in front, even if there's big pillar, not too much of an issue, but I cannot see the hood in front of me. So it's kind of hard for the distances. I need to rely on the sensor. And same thing in the rear. When I look at the back window, it's kind of small. With the sunroof open, the visibility will also be a reduce. Technology, fast, uh, easy. That sync tree system really connected with the driver, really give you information that you need. The screen is not too big, not too small. Respond quickly to all my input, and that's a thing that I like. Security has not been neglected in this car. You've got also an adaptive cruise control with a stop and go functionality that automatically will slow the car down. And you've got also a not old feature that will apply the brake for you. You've got also an available and enhanced spark assist that use uh, ultrasonic sensor to help the MKZ get into those tight parking space either parallel or perpendicular parking. And one of the best feature into parallel, you know, it's complicated to get in there. Sometimes with the system also, you would need a lot of shot when the spaces is tight. So when it's time to get out, a lot of system for the competition won't help you there. But with the Lincoln one, just press there and you will be able also to get help to get you off that tight parking spot. Pre-collision assist system and pedestrian detection is also available with this car. It will help avoid uh, some uh, frontal crash and lessen the severity of such event. Even for the belt, Lincoln has an option of inflatable belt. And if there is a crash, you won't get that nasty hit from the belt that will leave a trace over time. So in overall, the Lincoln NKZ has uh, surprised me in its performance way, in its assembly, in its connection that it makes with the driver. So right now, uh, you've got the chance to give me your comments right there in the section down there below. What do you think about the specification, the 400 horsepower that you find in this car? 
Also, don't forget to do a thumbs up if you like that uh, review. Right there in the corner, you can subscribe to Car Question if you want warnings when more videos are going to be available. And feel free to check the playlist for more video about the MKZ. So Matt is saying to you, see you another time on another video of Car Question.